as we're getting set for our second and final piece, our home folk know that every Mavis Men's Day, Mr. Robert would come up and sing one verse of Beulah Land. So this is in honor of Mr. Robert. pastor at Pleasant Plains Baptist Church after uh, many years there and then uh, he became our associational uh, director. Uh, we have 50 churches, 49 churches in our association uh, and I look after Nakana. He looks after 49 churches. He helps uh, churches to uh, 
any time uh, if they need uh, 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 somebody to fill in, uh, sometimes they'll call on him or call on him to find a supply pastor. Uh, if a church is in need of a pastor until they can get a pastor, he helps them uh, with that. He oversees all the mission activities that we do uh, and very active. Uh, someone asked him how he liked retirement after he left from Pleasant Plains. He did not retire. Uh, he, uh, he took on 48 more churches after he left Pleasant Plains, so uh, he's, uh, he's, he's still very busy, and we appreciate all the work he does, and so we're glad to have him. He stays pretty busy, and we're glad to have him today, and so Dave, if you will come and share with us. Well, good morning. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning. I bring you greetings from the Columbus Baptist Association, and I want to thank Nakina for being a vital and active part of our association, as Daryl said, made up of 49 churches. We work together to help to build the kingdom of God and share the message of the gospel, not just here in Columbus County, but literally all around the world. Uh, we have teams that are ministering, have just come back from a trip to uh, Nicaragua, uh, we have a partnership we've just established with uh, two church plants in Montana. Um, we have uh, partnerships with uh, uh, missionaries that are uh, in Indonesia and in India and Africa and Russia. And uh, so we are, we are busy. We have opportunities. If you're not involved in missions, uh, you need to be. You need to be. I know you have plenty of opportunity here through this church to get involved in missions. I know your pastor very well, and he keeps me up to date about all the activities that are happening here. Uh, and, and I would encourage you to avail yourself of that. It's one thing to, to support missions financially. It's a completely different thing to go out and put your hands in it and become involved. It will change your life, really will. And so I encourage you to, to take part in any missions opportunities that you're afforded either through the church or through the association. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I'd like for you to turn to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, we'll begin in verse 16. Once you've found that passage, if you would please stand in honor and reverence to the reading of God's Word this morning. Acts chapter 16. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her master as much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaim to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of her that very hour. But when, their master, when her masters saw that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. And they brought them to the magistrates and said, These men, being Jews, exceedingly trouble our city, and they teach customs which are not lawful for us, being Romans, to receive or observe. Then the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrate tore off their clothes and commanded them to be beaten with rods. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, and so the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's chains were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking from sleep and seeing the prison doors open, supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword and was about to kill himself. But Paul called out with a loud voice, saying, Do yourself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light and ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? May we pray. Father God, as we come this morning and look to your word, Lord, I pray that you will speak to us clearly, that we would not just hear the words as they've been read, 
But God, that we would apply them to our lives. That we would go from this place changed, going to seek and to do your will. God, I pray that this time together would be a time in which we sense your closeness, that we sense your spirit. Lord, I pray that you'd hide me behind the cross, that it not be my words this morning, but it be yours. And we'll be eternally grateful, looking for you, Lord, this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. I I realize this is Baptist Men's Day, but as I prayed and began to look at what I was going to speak about this morning, I, uh, I realized that there would be more than just women here, or more than just men here. Uh, and so my message this morning is, is not just tailored to the men, it's for everybody. There was a parakeet, a little tiny parakeet, sitting in the cage, singing away. He never saw it coming. One second he was peacefully on his perch, without a care in the world. And the next second he was sucked in and washed up and blown out. The problem began when Chippy's owner decided that she wanted to clean the cage with the vacuum cleaner. And just as she stood the wand into the cage, the phone rang. And before she could say hello, up went Chippy. Frantic, she put the phone down. She tore open the bag, and there was Chippy, still alive, but stunned. Since the bird was covered in dust and soot, she grabbed him up and ran into the bathroom and held him under the faucet to clean him off. And then realizing that Chippy was soaked to the bone and shivering, she did what any compassionate owner would do. She took the blow dryer and she blew dry this bird. Poor Chippy didn't know what hit him. A few days after the trauma, there was a news reporter that heard about it and had written a little article in the paper about it and called to find out how Chippy was doing since all this happened. Well, the owner said, Chippy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits on his perch and stares off into space. It's hard not to see why. Sucked in and washed up and blown over. That's enough to steal the song out of anybody's heart. Folks, Paul's life was a lot like Chippy's. He was beaten. He was stoned and left for dead. He was shipwrecked. He was snake bit. He was imprisoned. And yet all throughout it, Paul may have been discouraged from time to time, but he never got angry with God. He never got angry with his Lord. He simply took it all in stride and realized that there there must be a reason that all of this is happening. And unlike this bird... Paul kept looking back to the cross and looking forward to the coming of the Lord again. Here we have this scripture passage from Acts chapter 16 that talks about Paul and Silas and the others on their way to prayer. And they were called out by this local fortune teller. This girl harassed them for days. Now, I want you to realize that she, she may have said that These men come to proclaim salvation in the way of the Lord Jesus Christ, but she didn't do it like that. She was making fun of these guys come saying that they're proclaiming the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at these guys thinking they can do it all. She was making fun of them every day. And finally, Paul had had enough. Paul knew that this girl's problem was deep-seated and lied because an evil spirit had taken possession of her body. And so after days of being harassed, he turned to this girl and he commanded that the evil spirit leave her, and it did. Now in doing this, she no longer was able to make money for the boss, and the boss got mad. And he seized them and he brought them before the magistrates and he said, these guys are nothing but trouble. I'm tired of them running around taking money from me and now they've ruined the only thing I had that was bringing money in. What you going to do about it? And the magistrates ordered that be stripped and beaten with rods. Now most of y'all that are over 30 probably know what it's like to get a whipping. This was nothing like a whipping. Beaten with rods is painful. It leaves huge welts. It hurts like you can't even imagine. And they didn't just hit them once or twice. 
They beat them to within an inch of their life. They didn't do anything wrong. They were simply walking to go to the synagogue to pray. And all of a sudden, they found themselves hanging on to their dear lives. It wasn't fair. It wasn't right. It wasn't right at all. How would you react if that happened to you? What would you have said or done if they arrested you and beat you for really no reason at all? I can't even imagine how I'd respond. Honestly, I'll be, I'll be truthful with you. I'm afraid to think how I would respond. I'm, I'm a human that's full of sin, that has faults like everybody else. I'm an old cop from way back. And I, it, it, I can't imagine what would go through my mind if that happened to me. But yet Paul and Silas were beaten almost to death for no reason at all. Folks, I I talk to a lot of people every day. I talk to all kinds of people from all walks of life. And I've come to realize that there's one question that I never want to ask anybody. How are you? How are you? Folks today like to complain a whole lot. For the smallest reason. They don't look at their blessings but instead they focus on the little things that don't go their way. They focus on the problems that they have rather than upon all that God has done for them. The smallest little discomfort is going to kill them. The slightest inconvenience is going to ruin their life. Have you ever talked to people like that? Are, are, Are you somebody like that? Paul and Silas were beaten within an inch of their life. They were thrown into prison. They were put into stocks. And what does the word of God tell us they did? They sang hymns and praises to God. They sang hymns and praises to God. I started about 20 years ago following after a friend of mine. I attended one of his church services with him. He went to uh, uh, the St. James Missionary Baptist Church. And I noticed any time anybody asked him how he was doing, it didn't matter what was going on in his life, his response was, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I started doing that in my own life, and it's made a big difference. I encourage you to do the same thing in yours. It doesn't make any difference what's going on. It doesn't make any difference what happened. It doesn't make any difference how bad things might be. When somebody says, how are you today? The truth of the matter is, you are blessed. You see, it could always be worse. No matter whether I'm stiff-jointed, I've had both knees replaced, I've had two back surgeries, my back only... Decides to cooperate most of the time. I've had half a lung removed. I have pulmonary fibrosis. My lungs only work at 55%. But it doesn't make any difference. I don't say that for pity. I say it because I realize it could be a lot worse. And I truly am blessed. And so are you. I firmly believe that as we as Christians would seriously look at our lives and see all of the grace and the mercy and the blessings of the Lord that we receive each and every day, we can't help but come to the conclusion that we are blessed beyond measure. So let's think about this for just a moment. Your job isn't going exactly like you'd like it to go. But folks, you still have a job. You're blessed. You've got trouble with your kids. But hey, they're not in the morgue. You're blessed. Your bank account isn't as big as you'd like it to be. But you got some money in your pocket, which is more than most of the people in this world. You're blessed. Your house is too small, but you got a roof over your head. 
you're blessed. You're not going to be able to go out and buy that pretty dress that you saw or those fancy new sneakers that you saw. But folks, you've probably got more clothes than you need. You're blessed. You missed your favorite TV show because you weren't able to record it and you were late coming from a meeting and you missed it altogether. But hey, is that really important? Look how blessed you are. The doctor tells you that you have cancer. And you now have the opportunity to see the God of the universe really work what he does best. And reveal himself to you like never before. And you get to be a witness for what he is doing in you. You are blessed. Even with cancer, you're blessed. No matter what is happening, you are blessed. There's no getting around that fact. Now look at this jailer for a minute. The scripture tells us that he thought... That after this earthquake had come and shook the walls of the prison and the doors opened and the chains freed him, he thought everybody had escaped. And he knew that the penalty for letting a prisoner escape was death. Rather than face a tortuous death and execution, he pulled out his sword and was ready to fall upon it and kill himself. Paul and Silas hollered out in the darkness and said, Don't do it! We're all still here. Instead of fleeing, when the earthquake hit, they stayed and shared Jesus with this jailer who had seen them in the condition that they were in when they entered, had heard them singing praises, even clinging to life itself, and then given the opportunity to escape, they didn't. He said, I, I, I want what you have. Tell me what I must do to be saved. Can you imagine this jailer going and seeing all that he had seen, running in and falling down at the feet of Paul and Silas? What a witness and a testimony they were to this jailer. So much so that when things really got bad, he said, I want what you have. Tell me how I too can be saved. When you and I live our lives praising God regardless of the circumstances, praising the Lord Jesus even in the storm, we are a witness for Him. Others can see how we respond in a crisis and see how we act in a tragedy. And they say, there's something different about Him. There's something different about her. I want to know what it is because I too want it in my life. Folks, we have to get over ourselves and realize just how truly blessed we are and begin to live like it. We have to get to the point where we will say, I will praise the Lord no matter what. I will praise Him in the good times. I'll praise Him in the bad times. I'll praise Him in the hard times. I'll praise Him in the troubled times. I'll praise Him in the morning. I'll praise Him in the afternoon. I'll praise Him in the evening. I'll praise Him all day long. No matter what. What? The choice is yours. I used to tell my girls every morning when we'd take them to school, the choice is yours today whether you have a good day or not. It doesn't matter what anybody else says or does, you determine whether you're going to have a good day or not. Folks, the choice is ours whether we're going to allow our circumstances to take hold of us and dictate how we respond or whether we're going to praise the Lord no matter what. As I close my message this morning, I want to share a song with you and I'd like for you to listen to the words of this song, not just with your ears, but please listen with your heart as well. Go ahead, brother. darkness, the 
The cell was cold and black Driven to unconsciousness By the stripes upon his back He heard a voice call out his name His mind began to clear And in the darkness he replied Silas, I am here. You know, my brother Silas, all uttered with a groan. Today I thought for sure we'd be going home. And when I open up my eyes, I'd look upon his face But here we are together In this dreadful place But I will praise the Lord I will praise the Lord No matter what tomorrow brings or what it has in store I know I will praise the Lord I will praise the Lord I will praise the Lord no matter what Brings, or what it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. This may be a prison, these may be chains, but still I'm free. up as music filled their ears. Some men started swearing while others were in tears. Then suddenly it happened, oh there was no mistake. As Paul and Silas praised the Lord, the walls began to shake. I don't know where you are this morning. I, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what problems or circumstances you're dealing with. But I know the one who does. 
Paul battled for years with the thorn in the flesh. He begged the Lord three times to take it from him. And God said, my grace is sufficient. Let me tell you what the gospel of Dave says that means. That means that no matter what it is, God will not take it from you. But he'll walk with you step by step and see you through it to the other side. Whatever it is you're dealing with today. It might be a problem when a relationship with your spouse or your children or a friend. It might be difficulties at work. It might be a sickness or disease. Whatever it is this morning, God wants to be there with you to help you get through it. All he's waiting on is for you to say, Lord, help me. Help me. Folks, in a moment we're going to sing a hymn of invitation. And as we do, I want you to ask yourself this one question. Is what's going on in my life going to keep me from praising the Lord? If you're here this morning and you've never asked Jesus Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior, folks, it's hard for you to praise the one that's blessed you if you don't know him. Your pastor's going to be standing down here and he would love nothing more than to share Jesus Christ with you today. There's no reason why you should leave here today and not know Jesus as your personal Savior. Every opportunity is being afforded for you now. You may not get another one. For most of us, we've already made that decision already. But somewhere along the way, our priorities have gotten out of whack. God is no longer first in our life. Our schedules have taken over, our kids have taken over, our life has taken over, and we've kind of moved God to the back shelf. Folks, God is still here. He's not moved. He says, come back to me. You might just need to come and recommit your life to him and say, Lord, I'm sorry. But from this day forward, I want to put you first. You might just need to come to this altar and pray. Pray for the one that you know that you love who, who doesn't know Jesus. Pray for the sickness or disease that you're dealing with that God will give you the strength not only to get through it, but in the middle of it you can still praise Him. Whatever it is today, the Holy Spirit of God is nudging you. The question is, will you be obedient and respond? Or will you try to do things all by yourself? Folks, I don't know how I could make it a single day without Jesus in my life. And I'm not perfect. I know that. Just ask my wife, she'll tell you. But I do my best to get more like Jesus every day and to praise Him as I go. So as we stand and sing this morning, you come as the Lord leads you. Pastor. Number 598, where